this week, we got the 2022 Oscar nominations. That we did. And I thought we'd uh, talk about it for a little bit. Well, that's always fun, you know? That's always fun. It's always fun to look and see what's going yeah. on. So, when what are your... the actual Oscars? I, I feel like they're late this year. I think it's like early March. I feel like they're usually in February. They usually are. I think they pushed it back. Yeah. Um, I think they pushed it back last year and again this year. Yeah. But... Um, are they going to go no host again? You know what? I hope not. Man. But I feel like if they had a host, they would have already been announcing it. I feel like, can we just get Ricky Gervais to do all of these? Like, have him do the Grammys, have him do the Emmys, have him do I mean, the Oscars, and just completely rip everyone up yeah. every year? I'm not the biggest Ricky Gervais fan, but the utter contempt he has for not only like... The people being nominated, but the the award show in general for like the Golden Globes yeah. is must see TV. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It really is. <laughs> it's unbelievable stuff. Um, it's just crazy though that an award show for artists and performers has such a hard time booking a good host. Like you're yeah, you're literally throwing an awards party for professional top of the game a-list entertainers yeah and you can't amongst all those people you can't find you a good can't host find anybody it's crazy but um enough of that we got i think there were 10 best picture nominees this year and Ooh-wee. i don't i don't know the i know exact... i have i know i haven't seen them all yeah same so that's that's one thing that I need I usually, to work on. I usually don't get around to seeing like all or like ninety nine percent of the best picture nominees until like right up until the award show. Right. Because some of them. Well, because you want them to be fresh, you know. Yeah, you want them to be fresh. <laughs> yeah, you want them to be right there on the top. But most of them don't come out until like December, so then it yeah. takes like till late February yeah. for them to drop on demand or on Blu Ray. Yeah. But I don't know the exact science, but I know every year there's like at least like eight and it could be up to 10 nominees. So Mm. it's kind of a crazy, weird rule. But we had nominated for Best Picture, Nightmare Alley, Don't Look Up. (coughs) Sorry. Andrew, you son of a... (laughs) Sorry, excuse me. Dune, Drive My Car, Belfast, Licorice Pizza, The Power of the Dog, West Side Story the steven spielberg not right. the original that got randomly renominated. oh <laughs> yeah in case you were confused so confusing yeah king richard which i was kind of really surprised by that have and you seen king richard i haven't but i everyone i heard was everyone i heard talk about was like it was good and i it i didn't get any like yeah, it was good oscar hype from it you know <laughs> and then a uh, coda which i had remember reading some people talk about it but i don't remember it getting a ton of talk but that got nominated as well so i think it's a pretty interesting best picture race there's a lot of things covered here like you you got a big blockbuster movie like dune you have um kind of like a uh you have two remakes which is interesting nightmare alley and west side story um you have like a coming of age comedy and licorice pizza. You have your typical Oscar bait like Belfast, which is like an all black and white kind of Richard Brana's kind of personal memoir. Mm-hmm. Got a sports uh, biopic and King Richard. Um, a Western. A Western <laughs> style with Power of the Dog. And then a, another foreign film nominated, which I, I think that's cool that they're becoming more and more willing to take foreign films and not just isolate them in the best foreign film category. Right. Right. Um, so I'm overall pretty pleased with the nominees. I, you know, of course am stuck on a few movies that not only didn't get nominated for best picture, but didn't get nominated for anything. Yeah. Which is mind blowing. Like the green Knight, I thought for sure was a cinematography lock. I'm surprised. Or a costume design. Yeah. I'm really shocked that didn't get anything. No, no Dev Patel nominated, like no, I thought maybe even like adapted screenplay. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Um, uh, what else that didn't get nominated? Pig. Um, Pig didn't get any nomination. I think the best actor, which maybe I'll read them in a second, didn't seem like that strong of a race. So I don't know why Nicolas Cage couldn't get squeezed in there for the best yeah. actor in Pig. Um, 
But overall, I think it's a pretty good best picture race where it's not just all like your typical Oscar bait movies. I think there's a right. couple of movies in there that the general audiences would recognize and, you know, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? Oh, I, again, I come back to the thing where it's like, I think it's just fun. You know, I'm, I by no means think that like the best, maybe not the best movie is even in, is it the best movie of the year may not even be nominated at all. You know, right. it, it's so subjective. And I just feel like it, if the one, if your favorite movie isn't nominated, that doesn't mean it's not a great movie. And it's just, yeah. I, 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 it's just fun to me. It's not like serious. It's, it's just not that serious. Yeah. I mean, it is a big deal to win those things, but I just have a hard time. Yeah. For me, but, but I do enjoy, I, what I end up always using the Oscars for more than anything, mm-hmm. and I'm being straight, is there's the political always... Political speeches. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, I love the virtue signaling. Um, you kind of, you could play like a drinking game where it's like, okay, who's going to make a speech about global warming, you know, like... Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but I, I, I think that... I always enjoy hearing the nominations and they're without fail every year. There's like three or four movies. I'm mm-hmm. like, I either missed or like didn't hear much about and kind of forgot about. Yeah. And it's kind of like, Oh yeah, I really need to watch that. Like I need to get yep. that on the thing. So I really enjoy it for that. Just, and then watching it and being able to like have seen all these movies and then, yeah. you know, be able to appreciate that a little bit better. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I just don't get too hyped up about it, but, um, yeah, I do. Th- of course. I, I think that there are other movies that should have been nominated. I'm just picturing but... you like watching the Oscars. Like it's the super bowl Come on! <laughs> or like anyone doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. Eating popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, down. what do you mean? No green night. <laughs> Yeah, and you're just like you're actively cheering for yeah. like the actors and actresses and movies that you want. Yeah. Can you imagine like <laughs> can you imagine like someone like punching a hole in the drywall of their house because, <laughs> because so their favorite actor didn't didn't get the uh, throwing the remote at the TV and yeah. it does that thing where the screen just breaks. Yeah. No. No, yeah. I just For me I don't get too amped up about it, but I, I always do have fun with it. So I hear you because there's a lot to criticize for the Oscars. Mm. It's way too long. It's historically not very diverse. Um, it's a popularity contest. You know, it's it's the richest, most beautiful people in the world inflating their own egos. I get it. <laughs> There's the whole, like, um, artifice of it and the dresses and the tuxes and who's wearing what. You know, mm-hmm. if, if someone's in the fashion, that's cool. I'm just, I think sometimes it comes across to the general public as just like, again, rich, beautiful people just showing off how rich and beautiful they are. But sure. all that as a movie fan, this is like the one big stage right. where a few of my favorite movies of the year that m- maybe just like a few of my friends ever would have heard of that I could talk to gets plastered on every screen in America. Yeah. And for me, that's, that's really cool to yeah. be a fan of like a small film or Mm -hmm. a certain artist uh and to be like okay the whole country is going to at least hear the name of this film and maybe check it out and i think that's really cool i do too and you know for me that's what i hold on to and again like i like being exposed to new things so like even someone like me who keeps up with all these movies throughout the year there's a movie like coda and i'm like that got nominated. I don't remember hearing anything about that. I'm going to go check exactly. it out here soon. And that's, that's awesome. Exactly. I love that part of it. And I just think that we want to keep it like fun because there are all those things that you can talk about where it's like, you know, yeah. beautiful people talking about how beautiful they are and all that stuff. And you can get into all that stuff if you want, but just take it for what we it is. So beautiful. Just take it for what it is and enjoy it. And like, it is the one thing that, you know, movies yeah. can kind of, have a big stage and be like these were some of the best movies that came out this year and be talked about and you can talk about it with your friends and Mm. like i said i mean 
I love what I love events like the Oscars, like the Emmys, the Super Bowl, anything that has like a live broadcast element to it. Yeah. Because there's always the possibility something is going to happen that's crazy, that goes yeah. wrong. And I love those, like, I love the tension of that. Yeah. Just watching it and being like, something could go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> something like, oh man, like a couple of years ago, whenever they announced that, the wrong movie. That was movie, one of the best Oscars in a that long That was time. the ultimate, yeah. dude. Oh man, that was the best. Yeah. So if something like that could happen again this year, that would be awesome. Yeah. Those are always fun. Um, yeah. That's like, I, I'd be lying if that wasn't like a major element yeah. that I I'm loved a, about it. I'm a fan of injecting some chaos into the Oscars. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 and I think it's more compelling when you have like this award show that is very much about artifice and glamour and it's so formal. And I know they usually yeah. in the past have hired hosts who are more um irreverent who kind of poke fun at it but like right it, it's an orchestrated poking fun of themselves but like yeah. when things unintentionally go wrong i think it's a great juxtaposition between this like everything is glamour and formal then there's oh, just yeah. this un, unpredictable just chaos. chaos oh it's beautiful wait i don't think at least not to my knowledge i can't think of a a host in the past that has completely gone like off script like gone yeah. off like done whatever they want to do yeah i can't really think of one for the emmys obviously yeah. you can think like ricky gervais pretty much yeah. takes it all the way but for the oscars it's always seems pretty sterile like it always yeah. seems pretty so it would be a, that would be a fascinating thing to see happen at some point in the future just like hire like an, an actual comedian yeah to host it and then just let them roll, you know. Has Conan? I don't think Conan's ever done it. No, I don't. I would love to see Conan think host so. the Oscars. That would be great. It'd be good. Um, Seeing Conan pretty much do anything at this point I is know. just a blast. You know, it'd be hilarious though if they got if they got like a famous actor or um, director, or somebody who just is not like a typical host and would have complete and utter like contempt for it, like a Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Just like <laughs> grit his teeth through it. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones. What if they were like, okay, hey, Tommy. Hey, Tommy boy. Clint Eastwood. <laughs> yeah, Clint Eastwood. They're like, hey, Tommy boy. Uh, we're, we will we will guarantee whatever acting role, whatever script you've read that you want to get made, we will get it made if you host the Oscars. And it's just Tommy Lee Jones just like with utter contempt, <laughs> gritting his teeth through the whole thing, like hosting oh, the Oscars. Gosh, that would man. be hilarious. That would be amazing. Yeah. Who's another uh, David Fincher? That'd be a good one. Do you think he would be? You know, David Fincher's got a pretty good sense of humor. Does he? Yeah. I've, well, it's got to be. Like a dark sense of humor. He's got a dark sense of humor. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could be a cool Yeah, it would be thing. cool cool Oscars. Cool uh, moody Oscars. The girl with the what Oscar was it? tattoo. What was it? Was it last year where they were like uh, advertising um, Steven Soderbergh directing the intro? I can't, to dude, the Oscars I even, or something. For whatever reason, I think I had plans or like I couldn't watch it last yeah. year. So like I only caught a little bit of well, it. Well, I remember watching it and it was like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh. So and I don't want to take too long in the Oscars, but I do want to throw something at you. So Dune was nominated for Best Picture. Yeah. It was nom nominated for Cinematography. Um, I think it was nominated for Adapted Screenplay. Yeah. It, it got pretty much nominated in all of the major Gosh. categories. Denis, yeah. not nominated for best director. So the movie he directed was voted by his peers to be like the best picture, best cinematography, um, best adapted screenplay, like all the major elements were nominated, but he didn't get a directing nom, which I thought was interesting. And this happens a lot. That's really weird. And I feel like, as stupid as it sounds, mm -hmm. there's people making decisions and they're like, well, they got nominated for too much stuff. Right. We can't give them the director like, as well. Literally the guy who like spearheads and makes the tough decisions for all those categories. Like it's movie making is a group effort, but there's one person who's like making the decision, drawing the line, right. pointing the ship. And he didn't even get nominated, even though every other part of the movie got nominated. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. I and think that's kind of weird. Yeah, Denis I... deserves better. Deserves better. I mean, 
it wouldn't have been weird at all for him to be nominated. I mean, yeah. it's one of those things like it's definitely something I raise an eyebrow to that he's not, as opposed to him being nominated. If yeah. he was nominated, I would have been like, well, of course he's nominated. So, yeah, I think uh, when we get closer to the Oscars and we've kind of caught up as best we we can, mm -hmm. I think you and I should maybe like make a little uh, what you call it. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what are they? What are those called? Yep, yeah. you're doing a writing motion yeah. letter. Write a letter. <laughs> yeah, we're going to write a letter <laughs> to Mr. Oscar. Uh, Mr. Oscar. <laughs> yeah, you know him. Yeah, you know. You were doing what? Uh, do some more motions. Bra bracket. A uh, bracket. <laughs> <laughs> do some more motions. A you know, bracket. you know, because people print out Fill like out brackets. Of, right, and, right. Yeah, Fill out a bracket. We yeah. should do like a bracket type where we like okay. predict, you know, maybe on the podcast. Yeah. We, we like each fill out a bracket predict what's gonna win and we compare and then oscar yeah. and i will see who actually won boom i like it yeah we'll do it that's fun 